The topic of this video is we're going to get into creating waypoints for our NPC AI character. Now, the end goal is going to be some version of like four different kinds of ways that our enemy could traverse waypoints, whether that's going in order that you've set, maybe going reverse, maybe ping ponging between them and then maybe picking random waypoints that you set and just going between them so that you, the designer, have choices for different kinds of enemies, but it's all using the same kind of script. So if we take a look at our flowchart, we're just looking at the not alert state now, and we're looking at whether or not the enemy has waypoints, and if they do, we're just gonna loop through them. So this video is going to be the setup video for that, and hopefully if there's time, we'll actually get to looping. If not, that'll be the next one. Okay, so let's get into it. One easy way to create waypoints is you can just right click and create a 3D object. So I'm going to create like a sphere. I'm going to call this sphere waypoint one. And you can place this sphere where you'd like your waypoint to be, right? So maybe I'll have a waypoint here in the corner. And I'm going to make sure from the side view that it's actually above the map. Beautiful. So that'll be waypoint one. I'm going to hit command D and then place another one somewhere over here. Command D, let's do another one. And we only really care about the position data. We're going to turn off the mesh render so we can't see what they look like command D and the last one I'll put in the middle here I'm gonna go ahead and rename them because this will bug me but it really doesn't matter what they're called waypoint two three four and waypoint five so for this example I've created five waypoints and you could totally create way more or way less but I would say at least give yourself two so that you can program and test each type of NPC movement that we're gonna be making lastly now that you have all your waypoints go ahead and select the first one hold shift select the last one and turn them off in the inspector that's that little checkbox up there. Now that we have these objects, we need to create a way for our NPC to know about a list of them, right? Each NPC should have their own unique order and their own unique number of waypoints. Some NPCs might have no waypoints and others might have a whole bunch of them. So what we need to do is let's go ahead and hop into our NPC AI script and all the way up at the top where all of our variables are, we're going to create a private list of transforms since that's what we care about is the transform position data, right? And I'm just going to call this underscore waypoints. Let's also go ahead and serialize the field so we can see that in the inspector. Go ahead and save your script, pop back in, and on your NPC, you should see on the script, now there's a list of waypoints, which is zero. And now you can just assign waypoints. For me, I know that this NPC has five, so I'm going to type in five here. It's looking for five different transforms. So I can drag in waypoint one, waypoint two, and you can drag them in any order. I'm going to drag mine in order one, two, three, four, four, five, but you can drag yours in whatever order you'd like. And now let's actually hop back into our script because our NPC has a starting position here. But now that we have a list of waypoints, perhaps what we should do is we should have it go to the first element on the list of waypoints. And then maybe in the non-alert state here where our target is our starting position and we're going to that target, let's go ahead and change that. What we'd like to do is we want to check, do we have waypoints? And if we do have waypoints, we can set our target to the first element on that list. And remember that lists, the element starts at zero. So the first element on this list of waypoints is actually waypoint element zero. Cool. Just something to keep in mind. There are five, but it starts counting at zero. So to set our target to the first element on the list, that's actually setting it to waypoints sub index zero. And then we no longer want to set our target to our starting position anymore since we'll be checking if we have waypoints, right? I suppose we could do an else. If we don't have waypoints, we can go to our starting position. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So if you want, you can do this as a mini challenge. Go ahead and pause the video right here and see if you can complete the pseudocode right here and turn that into code. And what you should see if you get this correct is you should see your NPC go to the first waypoint on your list. And if your NPC has no waypoints that you've dragged in, it should go back to its starting position. Cool. So Hopefully you paused the video, hopefully you figured out a solution to that. If not, I'm gonna show you one right now. This one's really simple. Checking is just an if statement, and we're gonna check if the waypoints.count is greater than zero, meaning that we actually have some waypoints. So if it's greater than zero, what we wanna do is we wanna set our target to the first element of that list. So we wanna say target equals waypoints subindex zero dot position, right? Because our list is taking in a bunch of transforms and transforms data holds your position, rotation, and scale, we want the position. And for this target here, starting position, we can either delete that or we can wrap that in an else. 
meaning we don't have any waypoints, so we're just gonna have our NPC hang out at their starting position. So let's go ahead and hit save, hop back into Unity. Waypoint one is over here. Let's hit play. Awesome, and there it goes, all the way over to waypoint index zero. Yay, okay, so this is the setup portion of our waypoints done. For the next part, we're actually going to get into the very first type of movement that our NPC could do with these waypoints, which is looping through them in order. So let's take a look at an updated version of our flowchart to accommodate this. So da -da -da -da, here's our flowchart. We're checking, of course, if the enemy has waypoints. Then we're gonna set our target to the first waypoint of waypoints list, and we're gonna move there, which is what we currently have. After we've moved there, we're setting our target to the current waypoint plus one and move there. Then you can see we're gonna check, are we at the end of our list? If we are, we're gonna set our target to the first waypoint and move there, thus completing our loop. If we are not at the end of the waypoint list, if the answer is no, we're gonna set our target and increment up one more and move to there. So this is what we're gonna try to do for our looping behavior. So this may become way more complicated as we go, but let's maybe start by using a coroutine to move between points. This will allow us to loop through and pause at each waypoint if we wanted to pause, right? And we might need a variable to hold our current waypoint, right? Because you saw in our flowchart, we're incrementing up. So maybe all the way up at the top where we declare all of our variables above start, we're gonna need an index variable to store what current waypoint we're at, right? So I'm gonna make that a private integer called current waypoint. And by default, that's gonna equal zero, which is great because at the beginning, zero is the first element of our waypoints list. And like I said, let's maybe use a coroutine for this. So I'm gonna go down to see where this line of update is and the bracket goes down. So this is the last bracket of update. I'm gonna enter and put a coroutine right down here. Let's call it a private IE numerator and let's give it a name. I'm gonna call it like like move routine. Sure, perfect, we'll take move routine. And coroutines are underlined in red because they require at least one yield statement to satisfy their condition. So I'm, for now, I'm just gonna put a yield return null just so it's not underlined in red. Now that we have this coroutine in our NPC behaviors dot not alert in our switch statement here, instead of doing all of this that we have, we're gonna call that coroutine and handle it inside there instead. So what we're gonna say is we're gonna say start coroutine, move routine, and end that with a semicolon. And just so that in case we want to go back, I'm going to do a slash and an asterisk, and then an asterisk and a slash, just to comment out this block in case we need to go back to this. But we're going to call this move routine, and all of our movement will be handled within here. We're only moving between waypoints while we're in our non-alert state, so we need to maybe enter a while loop while our current state still equals our non-alert state, then I guess we could yield. We could put our yield return null here. And that way we don't have an infinite loop. You do need at least one yield statement so that it doesn't break your while loop. We need to check if we have waypoints. So that's if our waypoints.count is greater than zero. And honestly, because we're entering looping, we probably want to check if it's greater than one, right? We wanna make sure that we have at least two waypoints in order for us to loop between. Otherwise, we just are at waypoint zero. Yeah. So we want to check if waypoints.count is greater than one. And we also probably want to check because, you know, in our in our NPC thing here, in the waypoints list here, I could assign this waypoint to null. It could still be a count of five, but I could have forgotten to drag in a transform here, and this would break our program if we're not checking that it's null. So we also probably want to check not only if we have enough waypoints, but also, so and our waypoint points at the whatever current waypoint index as long as that's not equal to null. So this is checking, do we have enough waypoints and did I actually assign them? And if we did, then we can set our agent destination equal to the waypoints with the sub index of our current waypoint. Cool, sweet. Now the question is, how do we know when we've made it to our next waypoint destination? Maybe an easy way to do that is to check the distance between our transform and the target target waypoints position, right? So calculate the distance, perhaps calculate the distance between where we are and the waypoint that we're going to, which is waypoint sub index current waypoint. And we need to check like if that distance is less than, I don't know, like one unit or however close you'd like to. So if we're close to that, 
Then we need to check, are we at the end? If we are, set current waypoint to zero. Else, that means we're not at the end of the list. So are we at the end of the list of waypoints? If we are, go back to the beginning. Else, we still have more waypoints to loop through. So else, what we wanna do is we want to set our current waypoint plus plus, increment up. So that's like, go to the next point. Okay, this is huge. This is a big, big coroutine and what you should see if we do this correctly is we should see our character looping through each of these waypoints in order. Real quick, I'm going to go back into Unity and I am going to reassign waypoint one just so that all of these are not null. Okay, sick. This is the second part of the challenge where you could pause the video and try to complete this on your own. I know this is a lot more difficult than the first one. And if you get stuck, don't worry. I'm about to show you a solution right now. So let's start. I'm going to delete this yield return null because we're adding it in here. Let's start converting our pseudocode into code. So we're entering a while loop and we're checking while our current state equals the NPC behaviors dot not alert. Boom. Now we're going to yield return null. Now we need to check if we have waypoints at all. So we're entering an if statement. So we're going to check if the waypoints dot count is greater than one because in order to loop we need at least a couple to go between and the current waypoint. So the waypoints sub index current waypoint point is not equal to null so that I actually assigned it. If both of those things are true, beautiful. We can set our agent's destination to the waypoints array that we have or the list that we have, sub index current waypoint dot position. Cool. So we've yield returned null. Beautiful. We're checking that. We've set our destination. And now it's time in here to calculate the distance between our transform and the target waypoint position, right? So we need to create a temporary variable perhaps like a float for a distance and that distance is going to equal there's a method on the vector 3 I believe there's a method called vector 3 dot distance and if you look at your tooltip it takes in an a and a b and it will give you the distance between the two of them so the a is our transform dot position and the b is the waypoints sub index current waypoint dot position right so we're getting the distance between us and where we're headed cool so that's this part done. Bam. Now we need to check. Are we close to our waypoint? So if the distance is less than, I guess, 1.0, but maybe you can mess around with that number. Now we need to check these things. Are we at the end of the list of waypoints? So we need to check if the current waypoint that we're heading to equals the waypoints dot count. Now, remember that our waypoints list, here, let's look at this. It starts at zero. So the count is five, right? One, two, three, three, four, five. But because it starts at zero, we will never reach element five because that doesn't exist. In order to check if we're at the end, we're trying to see if it's four. So weirdly, we have to check is our current index the count minus one because that will get us the index number that we need for the fourth one. This is a tricky one, right? So it's if the current waypoint index zero, one, two, three, four equals the count, which is five minus one. And this would mean we are at the end. I hope that makes some sense. So if we're at the end, we're going to set our current waypoint equal to zero. And then else, meaning we're not at the end of our list, we can go current waypoint plus plus. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm going to delete these comments. Let's go ahead and hit save. Okay, so I've moved my player game object out of the way and we should see our NPC going to one. Here's two and he's going around the obstacle. We love to see it. Perfect. Here's three. Awesome. Here is four. He's going so good. And five in the middle. And here's the test. Hopefully it goes all the way back to one. Yes, it does. Perfect. The other thing to test as well is can we still interrupt his cycle? Oh God, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. He's coming at me. Okay, perfect. And then if I go away, will he eventually go back to looping? Yes, he does. Perfect. After a few seconds, he goes all the way back to his non-alert state and resumes looping. Perfect. Okay, awesome. Beautiful. Wonderful. This is exactly what we want. Okay, hopefully this is working for you. Hopefully this was helpful. Good job in this one, and I will see you in the next one.